Okay, folks, I was looking back at my earlier video talking about the first page of Eric July's ISOM number one, uh, the first offering in the Ripaverse, and I was looking at how critical I was being of that first page and the panel on the second page that followed, and while I still think everything that I said was valid, I noticed that my tone was eh, kind of less than constructive. I mean, I was very, very upset in that video, and it showed all the way through to the point where I was dropping F-bombs and having to label the video not safe for work. And I, I kept thinking to myself, you know, I've done, I've done reviews of other materials. Why is it that I am, I am so upset over this one, which is making mistakes alongside the type of mistakes that I've seen before from these other properties? And and the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I actually I actually come right out and say the reason right in the video. There's a point in the video in which I say I didn't pay thirty five dollars just to just to encounter these kinds of mistakes. All of the other stuff that I've done in the past, as far as doing reviews, whether it's reviews of previews online, in which case the material is free, or it's been spoiler reviews of Cyber Frog Blood Honey, the uh, Ultimate Edition which I got at a very low price. I got that for uh, $10 with shipping and handling, or ship tax and shipping, it came to about $20 all total. But still, that was a very, very reasonable price, considering that there were various other combinations of getting that material where it would have cost me anywhere from $50 to, you know, maybe down to $30 at, at best. So the fact that I was able to pick up a very cheap copy, uh, which was dented and dinged, but, you know, still a good reading copy, uh, that really mitigated the feeling, any feeling I had that I had gotten, well, gypped in any way by having a comic book that was not up to the level of quality or was making mistakes on a level that I found unacceptable. And that, that leads me to just want to talk about the fact that price point matters when it comes to selling these comic books. I mean, ISOM is a $35 comic book with tax that's going to come to about $40, with shipping that's going to come to about $50. That's an enormous amount of money to spend on a single comic book, even though it is a 96-page comic book, so you're talking about the size of four standard-sized comic books. Now, if you, but, but if you go out to the comic book shop and you plunk down money on four comic books off the rack, more likely than not, your price is going to be somewhere between $16 and $20. And so if I had paid $20 for ISOM instead of $35, I don't know if I'd be having such a problem or, or be feeling the same kind of rage that I feel when I'm, when I'm encountering these mistakes that I see in, in uh, the first couple of pages. And... Uh, yeah, it, it, and I also made mention of the fact that I bought ISOM with store credit largely, uh, which was, uh, I had about $60 of store credit on file with mycomicshop.com, and they had Incredible Hulk Epic Collection number 7 available for $32, and then ISOM was available for 35 and then there was tax and shipping, so I wound up paying about $70 with $60 of that being store credit for the two books. And even though it's store credit, you got to understand that that's still store credit I could have spent towards something else. Just the fact that it's store credit doesn't mean that it's not money to me in some real way, shape, or form. I could have saved that $35 in store credit for another Epic collection. You know, I, I've got several on the way that I know I'm going to get. The Amazing Spider-Man Epic Collection number 9, Captain America Epic Collection number 5 is finally going to be on its way. Uh, there's several epic collections out there. Guardians of the Galaxy is going to have one uh, that I want to get. And I could have used that credit toward that. And so I feel it's it's hard not to feel a bit deprived, even though, you know, I'm an adult. I decided to make the purchase myself. And so, you know, I can't, I can't blame anyone for, for holding me over a barrel for it. But at the same time, when you get something that is $35 for which you are normally used to paying, you know, 20 at most, don't you expect some kind of additional quality out of it? I mean, if I went to a place and ordered a steak 
and they charged you know thirty dollars for a steak that I can get the same size and and cut over at Chili's for like fifteen dollars. I'm going to expect that steak to be twice as good as the steak that I get at Chili's, or at least good enough that I can say this was worth paying thirty dollars for. This was a steak so good that I would actually pay thirty dollars for it. That I don't regret the fact that I could still have fifteen dollars in my pocket if. I had just gone to Chili's and gotten the $15 steak instead. Comic books work the same way. You have to make the reader feel like they're getting something special out of this. And when you have these kinds of, you know, fumbles in the first couple of pages, you know, making your first impression beyond the fact of, you know, the first impression of a book that's just expensive as a book that thick, um... You know that that's to have those kinds of that kind of first impression out of the gate. God, I mean, I can't I can't think of any way to put that other than unacceptable. So, if you're going to keep putting out items of this particular uh, of this particular type, either the quality's got to go up or the price has got to come down. Because, you know, I can't see myself assuming that the rest of the book is at the same level of quality of what I've seen so far, and I've gotten about seven pages into the book at this point. I'm trying to get digested in little chunks, both based on you know other people's input and based on what I'm seeing in front of me. There's one person who said, I gave up on it after five pages. I'm like, are you serious? And I don't really see any reason to do that, but I'm, I'm looking at it and saying, okay, well, there, there are things that I'm gonna point out in the first seven pages that I think, okay, this could have been done differently here or there. But, I, I, I'm going to want, I'm going to have higher expectations of something that costs more. That's just the way I'm wired. That's just the way pretty much everybody is wired. And so I, I have a hard time with uh, these independent comics exploits. I, I want to say crowdfunding ventures, but I just got into a conversation with Eric July about whether it's technically crowdfunding or not. So uh, that's a whole other separate matter. Um, these, these independent comics projects... I want them to succeed, and I want them to be lucrative for the creators, but at the same time, I also don't want the buyers to feel like they're paying too much. And especially me, especially me, if I'm the buyer, I don't want to feel like I'm paying too much for a product that is, you know, just as average as any other $20 or $15 volume that I could pull out of a Barnes & Nobles or something. Uh... So I, I would say, you know, take take time to reevaluate whether or not you're actually selling at a price point that your readers are content with. Now, of course, you know, if when you rake in three point seven million dollars, that doesn't exactly give you incentive to change any of your pricing strategies. But we'll see how things go on the second time around, and maybe, you know, maybe there'll be incentive to ch to to change some of that pricing schedule then, or not. I don't know. I don't know how any of this is going to shape up. I, hell, I haven't even read the whole book yet, so I don't even know how the whole book shapes up. Maybe there's going to be something in there that blows my mind to the tune of me saying, okay, yeah, this was definitely worth the whole 35 bucks. Could happen. I, I'm always keeping an open mind as far as that's concerned. But um, but right now, yeah. I mean, it, it. the reason behind the anger in my previous video, I have to say, is directly tied to the fact that I paid such a high price for a book that was upsetting me from the get-go. Uh, I don't know how to explain it any, any more than that. In my future videos, I'm going to try and see if I can tamp that down and just basically say, okay, you know, forget about the fact that the money's gone, you know, you're not getting it back. Let's just deal with the fact that you've got this book in hand and you got to review it. So, you know, give it, give it a good shake, give it a fair shake in a... In a uh, fair review and a calm review and a constructive review and maybe you know just see if you can keep that temper under control <laughs> so anyway that's what i'm looking forward to for the next few videos uh talking more about isom and things around it so uh do subscribe if you haven't already so you get notified of those videos and i will talk to you later